Okay, bonjour at 11. Hope you're having a good uh, isolation at home and are managing to get everything done that you need to. So in today's lesson, we are going to be looking at the topic of a, a part-time job. So continuing with our careers topic. So some of the vocabulary will overlap. This is more jobs that are specific that would be part-time jobs we're mainly looking at today. And then vocabulary to describe the money you might earn and the hours that you would work. So if you put in your books, please chinois, because you're doing this at home, today's date, and then mon petit boulot as your title. Um, if you decide to do all your work on Word or PowerPoint, that's okay, but you'll need to obviously print everything to go into your book. So it might just be easier to do it straight into your book and then submit the photos of your work. I don't mind either way, you, but if you would prefer to use Word and PowerPoint, that's no problem at all. Just make sure um, you get it printed afterwards. Um, if there's only one or two of you, then I can arrange that printing. Okay, so once you've done data class and title, let's move on then. Um, so just a little bit of recap of some vocabulary for us. So what I want you to do is just uh, skim read the English and the French. Write down any that you have forgotten or didn't know. See how many you can work out. So pause the video and just see how many you know. You only need to write down the ones that you don't think you are sure of. Okay, so let's check the answers then. So you have to work on a Saturday is on doit travailler le samedi. Do you include this because we're using the, the verb doit in today's lesson? And we can obviously adapt this to talk about when we work. Just a couple of extra new pieces of vocabulary for you is headmaster, directeur. Okay, head, hairdresser we've done before, coiffeur. It's monotonous or boring we've done before, monotone. But just remind ourselves to use that word and not always ennuyeux. It's tiring, c'est fatigant. C'est bien payé, it's well paid. Okay, oh, that one's jumped up there. Nurse and fermier, c'est stressant, it's stressful. Directrice, headmistress, and a businessman is an homme d'affaires. So that is a new word for us there. So a bit of new vocabulary just to keep uh, updating our work vocabulary and refresh our memories for some words we might use in today's lesson. Okay, so moving on to our petit boulot vocabulary, then our part-time jobs work. So can you put the subtitle Les petits boulot key vocab? So this is some really key vocabulary for talking about part-time jobs sentence starters or different types of jobs. So I need you to copy these into your book and then see how many of the English you can work out. Or if you're working, um, if you have a printer at home, you could print these and then write the English next to them. Or you can type or copy them onto a Word or PowerPoint. Obviously, if you write the French as well as the English, they're going to stick in your heads better. Even though you might not have a part-time job, just a little pointer there that you may be required to translate work about part-time jobs or you could be given a role play circumstance where you have to pretend you've got one so even if you haven't got a part-time job you still need to be aware of the vocabulary for them okay so take some time to work out as much of this vocabulary as you can bear in mind the topic what jobs might be normal part-time jobs rather than careers here and then when you're ready unpause and go through the vocabulary so, je travaille donc, I work in a leisure centre, a fast food restaurant, a cafe or restaurant, obviously, hairdressers, supermarket, garage, shop, and a chip shop. Then we have the sentence that is je dois, I must, and then on doit means you must, or it can mean one must. So, in a supermarket, one must stack shelves and so on, okay? The you in general, you must stack shelves. Je fais du babysitting, I do babysitting. Je livre des journaux, I deliver newspapers. We've done this with journaux before. Remember, newspaper tends to come out daily, or they used to, um, and the word for jour is day, so these are dailies, okay? And I walk dogs. So just having a little look at some part-time job vocabulary, but also looking in general at why people might be interested in certain jobs. What you need to do is match each of these names down the side here, David, Sandrine, Baptiste, and so on, to one of these jobs that would best suit them. So you're going to have three jobs left over. So in your books, you can put David and put his job, Sandrine, put her job, and so on, okay? Please don't just type these sentences into Google Translate, je m'intéresse aux sciences, and so on. Look for cognates there. So if I was looking at David's, 
can see je m'intéresse, it might be an interested, science, we know, I would like, and then a shop. So if I was the skin reader here, we've got a hairdresser might want a shop, but not necessarily to do with science. Factor, can you remember that? It's a postman. Farmer, mechanic, air hostess. Vonder, do you remember that one from a couple of lessons ago? I mean, salesperson, pharmacist, teacher, and remember, heavy goods driver, okay? So maybe you're not sure 100% there, which one might it be because of the word shop, but I can see science straight away matches about being a pharmacist. So maybe they're saying they would like to work in a pharmacy, and it actually means have my own shop. So therefore, David, we would put pharmacien. Okay, so we've done the first one together. Continue on and work out as many of these as you can. So you will use six of those jobs all together, including, uh, not include, including David's way. Okay, so unpause when you're ready to check your answers. So when you are checking your answers, can you please correct in a different colour or copy and paste the green ticks as usual, okay? So Sandrine would like to be an instituteur, a primary teacher. She loves working with children. Baptiste would like to be a hairdresser. He says, interested in fashion, I cut my friend's hair. Amandine would like to be a post uh, person because uh, she likes being outside, going for walks and being organised. Chloe would like to be an air hostess. She likes travelling, visiting different countries. Zach would like to be a farmer. He mentions the word farm right there. He lives on a farm, would like to always work with animals. Okay, our next lot of vocabulary then is to do with the times people might work, their salary and tasks they might do. So same again, copy these into your book and see how many of these you can work out. There's a bit more extra new vocabulary here compared to the type of job you might have that we looked at in our previous list. So see what you can do. Doesn't matter if you have many gaps in your work. Um, just see what you can work out from the context. Okay, so if you unpause it, it means you've done as much as you can and you're ready to check the English. Don't just write down the English without trying to work some out because they will stick in your head better if you've had to work them out rather than just being given the answers. So we've got I work from nine to five. Okay, so remember with times in French, we put whatever number it is and then use this word heure, which means hours. So I work from nine hours to, and they use the 24 hour clock a lot in France. So 17 to five o'clock, okay? Je gagne means I earn, okay? In French, the word pound is livre. So je gagne cinq livres par heure. Yes, it means book as well, but obviously it depends on the context, which one it's going to mean, okay? Maybe one task you might do in your part-time job is fait le café pour les clients, so make coffee for customers. If you've written clients there, not necessarily wrong, but we wouldn't call somebody in a cafe your client, they would be your customer, so it means customer as well, okay? We've done à la case before, I work on the till. Probably wouldn't know livre raison, unless you'd worked out when we did je livre des journaux, I deliver newspapers, that with their livre, so we call a homophone, it means three different things. So pound, read and deliver. Okay, so I do deliveries. Je serre les clients, I serve customers. I tidy away, like je range, like we did with I tidy my bedroom, we did jobs at home. I tidy sports equipment or the clothes if you work in a clothes shop and I fill the shelves. Unlikely that you would have worked that one out, okay? So make sure you've got all the English, then move on with us when you're ready. Okay, so we're going to do a reading to go over some of that vocabulary now. So if you can please write one to seven in your book or on the computer. And then you're going to write the name of each person by reading their speech bubbles that matches with each statement. So which person says they start at four o'clock and they finish at six o'clock? Bear in mind, they are likely to use the 24 hour clock. Um, so if you're not so sure about the 24 hour clock, you'll be scared and 12 onto these numbers, but hopefully you are aware of that. Um, so take some time now to skim read what you're looking for and then skim read the texts because you already know what you're looking for, you should start to see some of the answers as you skim read each text then. 
And then when you're ready, check your answers and mark them in a different colour or copy and paste a green tick. OK. OK, so number one is Ben. He says, I start at 16h. OK, et je finis, I finish at 18h. So, 4 till 6. Then we have Luke in 13 euros. So, je gagne 13 euros. They say 13 euros 50. But they set it out like this. So, though they say it like we do, like 13 pounds 50, the euro sign comes at the end. Qui travaille chaque samedi, who works every Saturday, says Abdul. I work tous les samedi, all Saturdays. Natalie says, I earn 5 euros per hour. Sophie, je travaille tous les weekends, I work every weekend. Luke, I work from 9 to midday, midi. And then Natalie says, I work 7 hours per week. Okay, so if I've gone too fast, I just rewind and check your answers. You obviously can pause whenever you need to. And now we're going to look at a listening activity. We're going to listen to four people describing their part-time jobs and we're just going to switch into another video now uh, as I had to do the listening separately in school for you, for you to hear the listening, okay? In fact, Mr Lewis will probably be able to put these together but they might be in a separate video when you come to do this. Uh, I'll explain on Monday once it's all been converted for, uh, ready, okay? Okay, you're 11. We're next going to do a listening about part-time jobs, the hours they work and the salary they get. So you can either copy this grid down into your books or you can print the uh, word version off Moodle to fill in or you can fill it in uh, online on, on the word version if you save a copy. So I'm going to play these four people telling us about their part-time job, the hours they work and their salary. So some has been filled in, so number one has already been done. They work in a supermarché on samedi from 9h to 13h and they get 4 euros de l'heure, 4 euros per hour. Okay, so each one has got the rest, I've got one detail filled in. I'm going to play number one as the example. So just listen and see if you can notice the different information there. And then I'll play the others. Um, I'm going to play them just once through as this is a separate video clip. So you can go back and replay them however many times that you want to. Okay? Thomas, as-tu un petit job? Oui. Je travaille dans un supermarché. Quand fais-tu ça Je travaille tous les samedis, de 9h à 13h. Et tu gagnes combien Je gagne 4 euros de l'heure. C'est nul. So that was number one, the example. Deux. Mélanie, tu as un petit boulot aussi Oui, je fais du babysitting. Tu fais ça quand D'habitude Je fais ça le vendredi de 19h à 22h30. Et combien d'argent gagnes-tu Pour ça, je gagne 12 euros. C'est chouette. Two. Trois. Now three. Et toi, Kim, as-tu un job Oui. Mon petit boulot, c'est dans un fast-food. Tu travailles combien d'heures par semaine Je travaille 6 heures par semaine. Et combien gagnes-tu Je gagne 4,50 euros de l'heure. Mais c'est en mieux. 4. Last one. Et finalement, Léa, quel job fais-tu Je livre des journaux. Tu fais ça tous les jours Oui, je fais ça tous les jours, de 7h à 8h. Et tu gagnes combien d'argent Pour ça Je gagne 15 euros par semaine. Ce n'est pas mal. OK. So that was the whole listening. That was each one. So now, if you finish, great. If you weren't pausing, obviously you need to go back now and replay each one that you need to. Go back and re-listen. I wouldn't have expected you to have listened all the way through um, and answered as you wrote. Uh, uh, listened as you wrote, sorry. So make sure you 
repeat however many times you need to and write down all the details and then check your answers uh, with the rest of the video, the next video. Okay, so hopefully now you are ready to mark yours. So number two, Wicks, uh, doing babysitting and their salary is 12 euros. The number three job is working in a fast food restaurant and they work six hours per week, it's easier to pass them in. They work every day in number four, delivering newspapers from seven until eight and they earn counts euro 15 euros per week. Okay, let's have a look in more detail now about some of the tasks that people might do in their jobs as well as get to know some of the job vocabulary a bit better that we have been looking at this lesson. So if you write down job tasks as your subtitle and then write down A to H and you're going to match two bubbles with each image. So you've got somebody doing working with children, somebody making a till, somebody delivering newspapers, working in a fast food restaurant, working in a grocer's, working uh, in a hairdresser's and who in Hoovering, sports centre and working on a farm. So if I was going to look at image A first of all, uh, I would skim read here and things like supermarché, passe l'aspirateur, see if you can remember what job that is we, we did a while ago, uh, make coffee, fast food, you can see like animal, kids, livre des journaux from the start of today's lesson, épicerie is a green grocers, okay, uh, livraison that we did in a, one of the lists of vocabulary, ferme, hamburger, salon de coiffure, équipement sportif, okay, there's my first word there that I've seen that links to the image, so something about children. So I look after children of my neighbours, so that would be 13. And then I can see in Centre de Loisirs we did earlier, Rempli de Rayon we did in my list of jobs earlier, and there's the word babysitting. So I didn't need to understand everything in there, I was skim reading for cognates or near cognates or things we did in our vocabulary list at the start of the lesson. So you can just write down A is 13 and 16. So pause the video and skim read now these bubbles to find things that match the images. You might find that you can only find one for B and need to come back and find the other one or, or anything like that, that's fine. But by the end you should have used each of those bubbles and matched it to an image so each image will have two bubbles. Okay let's go through the answers then. So B is one and five. My, my small job, my part-time job, it's in a supermarket. I work at the till. C is six and eight. I deliver newspapers. I do deliveries at houses near my house. So any vocabulary I mention, please pause the video and write it down, add it to your books. D, I have a small job in a fast food. I must or you must, one must, that sort of meaning, serve hamburgers to clients. E, my job is in a grocery, grocers of my uncle and I must fill the shelves of the shop. F, I must uh, hoover, pass the spirituality, literally pass the hoover, and make coffee for clients or for customers. And 11, I have a part-time job in a hairdresser's. G is, I must tidy away the sports equipment. I work in a leisure center, which leaves, I must give fo food to the animals and I have a job on a farm for H, okay? Right, let's have a go at building up now to you writing about part-time jobs by looking at an example paragraph but as a gap fill, okay? So what I'd like you to do, everyone needs to complete task one but some of you might decide you'd like the challenge of task two as well. So we're going to write one to eight in your books or you can write out this text or copy and paste it, it's up to you as long as you show that you have completed all eight gaps. So obviously we're talking about part-time jobs here, so bear that in mind as we fill it in. Because if I was looking here, it's just something or cinema, straight away you might be thinking, I go to the cinema, should be your cinema, but that's not going to work. Number one, it's not one of the words, and also we're looking at part-time jobs. So let's look at the words below. I want you to pause the video and take a little bit of time to see if you can work out what all these mean and then we'll go through them. So bien payé, 
Remember means well paid. Commence is the verb start, commence. Travail, the verb work. Voiture is a car. Maybe you've forgotten that from our transport topic. Heure are hours, so that goes with time. Ennui is boring. Gagne means in, when we saw at the start of the lesson. And dur means last, as in like it lasts something. But it also can mean it's, it's difficult, it's hard. Okay. So as our gap with our gap fill last week, you need to look at the words before it. So I've got I something and then a noun. Well, this must be because every verb, every sentence needs a verb, a doing word. I need a verb here. The only two, there's a few verbs here, but really there's only one that would make sense there. Okay. I, what verb is V? I something to, to, to work in something with my dad. So what verb is, what, um, what noun, sorry, is going to make sense here? Then something is talking about five minutes. So you wouldn't work for five minutes. So what might le trajet mean and what verb could fit there? Okay. Then I've got a time here. A something at this time is je finis at some cinq and demi. So I'm probably looking at times again here because I've got a half. I something six livres, so we're talking about salary here, six pounds, and then there's some opinions on their jobs. It is, and it is. So take some time now to work out where those go, and be careful here with the me, you're deciding which way round some descriptions would go. And then when you're ready, unpause and check your answers. So we've got I work in a cinema, I go to work by car or voiture with my dad. The journey lasts dur cinq minutes, five minutes. I start at nine o'clock and I finish at five hours and a half, literally. And then the words half past five. I earn six pounds per hour. <clears throat> I don't like my job because it's boring, but it's well paid. So I had to put boring here because it wouldn't have made sense to say I don't like my job because it's well paid, but it's boring. Okay. So well done if you also translated that. So we're all gonna have a go at a translation taken straight from the WJEC. So there are gonna be one or two words in here that we haven't covered today, but everything in here we have done before. It might be that you need to rewind back a little bit or look back through today's lesson. Try not to look things up, okay? In an exam, you wouldn't have a translator, you wouldn't have a dictionary. You need to work things out from the context. So fill in as much English as you can, leave gaps where you're not sure, and put in words, English words at the end that logically would fit those gaps, okay? So take plenty of time over this, don't rush it, don't just have a tiny go and wait for the answers. See how you manage, okay? Now, ideally, I would like to take these into Mark so that I can see really how you have done with your translation before you do any sort of corrections on it. So please honestly mark this with the right uh, colour and adding in what you didn't get. Um, and the reason I'm letting you mark it now and go through it and not me is it makes a lot more sense like with all the activities we've done if you get direct feedback whereas if you get the answers back a week later it's not going you're not going to look at the French word compared to the English a week later you're not going to make that connection you're going to have forgotten what you were actually working on so it's a lot more beneficial to have the immediate feedback see so let's go through this then so on the weekends I work in a little shop shoe shop now two when you put before little okay I mean it does mean all so if I'm saying an all little shop you're saying like a really or a very little shoe shop okay I save the customers and I work on the till the hours are long and I am tired when I return home in the future I would also like to open my own clothes shop because I am interested in fashion so the words that might have caused a problem there are propre, but we did mention it earlier on in today's lesson, own shop, and to before petit. Maybe you've also forgotten chaussure from our clothes, but the other words there we did either do today or hopefully you remember because they're more common, perhaps rentre might have caused some issues there. Um, so well done if you've done quite well in that translation. 
If there's words you're missing, please make sure you wrote them down with the French so that you're aware of words that you need to learn. All right, we're going to now do a writing. So we're going to use those two paragraphs that we've just seen, the translation and the uh, gap fill, to give you some more ideas. But you're going to write a paragraph about either your own part-time job if you have one, or if you don't have one, then you're going to use one of these blue boxes here to describe a made-up part-time job. So these are the three things you must include, but you could add more detail. Ce que vous faites comme job. So what you do as a job, les horaires de travail et le salaire, the hours that you work and the salary, les avantages et les inconvénients, the advantages and the inconveniences. Okay, so if you're picking this one, for example, you will say that you work in a clothes shop from sat on a Saturday from nine to five, that you don't like the hours, you do hoovering, you stack shelves, your salary is 45 euros and that's good. So I guess that'd be 45 euros a week. Um, or day, your boss, your patron is okay, say something about that, but you like your colleagues. So it doesn't have to be, I like my colleagues. It could be, I like my colleagues because, give a reason. I get on well with my colleagues because, um, and that sort of thing, okay? So write a little paragraph about either your own part-time job or made up. And like I said, look back at the gap fill. So for example, if we skim up to here, we can see that she, this person mentioned that they go to work in the car, how long the journey lasts, um, and then a balanced argument about their opinion on their job. Um, and this one talked a little bit about the future in relation to their job now. So just think about other things that you could include as you write this, okay? So make sure you take plenty of time on this and please don't use Google Translate. You have everything you need in from today's lesson. You can go, go back and rewind or look at the Google Slides to flip to different slides if you need more vocabulary, but you have got a lot in your book now, okay? Okay, bonjour, year 11. Hope you're having a good uh, isolation at home and uh, managing to get everything done. That you need to. So in today's lesson we are going to be looking at the topic of a, a part-time job. So continuing with our careers topic. So some of the vocabulary will overlap. This is more jobs that are specific that would be part-time jobs we're mainly looking at today and then vocabulary to describe the money you might earn and the hours that you would work. So if you put in your books please chez moi because you're doing this at home, today's date and then mon petit boulot as your title. Um, if you decide to do all your work on Word or PowerPoint, that's okay, but you'll need to obviously print everything to go into your book. So it might just be easier to do it straight into your book and then submit the photos of your work. I don't mind either way, you, but if you would prefer to use Word and PowerPoint, that's no problem at all. Just make sure you get it printed afterwards. Um, if there's only one or two of you, then I can arrange that printing. Okay, so once you've done data on class and title, let's move on then. Um, so just a little bit of recap of some vocabulary for us. So what I want you to do is just uh, skim read the English and the French. Write down any that you have forgotten or didn't know. See how many you can work out. So pause the video and just see how many you know. You only need to write down the ones that you don't think you are sure of. Okay, so let's check the answers then. So you have to work on a Saturday. Is on doit travailler le samedi. So you included this because we're using the the verb devoir in today's lesson and we can obviously adapt this to talk about when we work. Just a couple of extra new pieces of vocabulary for you is headmaster, directeur, okay, Head, hairdresser we've done before, coiffeur, it's monotonous or boring we've done before, monotone, but just remind ourselves to use that word and not always ennuyeux. It's tiring, c'est fatigant, c'est bien payé, it's well paid, Okay, oh, that one's jumped there. Nurse and fermier, c'est stressant, it's stressful. Directrice, headmistress, and a businessman is an homme d'affaires. So that is a new word for us there. So a bit of new vocabulary just to keep uh, updating our work vocabulary and refresh our memories for some words we might use in today's lesson. Okay, 
So moving on to our Pretty Boulot vocabulary, then our part-time jobs quick. So can you put the subtitle Le Pretty Boulot Key Vocab? So this is some really key vocabulary for talking about part-time jobs, sentence starters, or different types of jobs. So I need you to copy these into your book and then see how many of the English you can work out. Or if you're working, um, if you have a printer at home, you could print these and then write the English next to them. Or you can type or copy them onto a Word or PowerPoint. Because if you write the French as well as the English, they're going to stick in your heads better. Even though you might not have a part-time job, just a little pointer there that you may be required to translate work about part-time jobs, or you could be given a role play circumstance where you have to pretend you've got one. So even if you haven't got a part-time job, you still need to be aware of the vocabulary for them. Okay, so take some time to work out as much of this vocabulary as you can. Bear in mind the topic, what jobs might be normal part-time jobs rather than careers here. And then when you're ready, unpause and go through the vocabulary. So je travaille donc, I work in a leisure centre, a fast food restaurant, a cafe or restaurant obviously, hairdressers, supermarket, garage, shop and a chip shop. Then we have the sentence that is je dois, I must, and then on doit means you must, or it can mean one must. So in a supermarket, one must stack shelves and so on. Okay, the you in general, you must stack shelves. Je fais du babysitting, I do babysitting. Je livre des journaux, I deliver newspapers. We've done this with journaux before. Remember, a newspaper tends to come out daily, or they used to, um, and the word for jour is day, so these are dailies, okay? And I walk dogs. So just having a little look at some part-time job vocabulary, but also looking in general at why people might be interested in certain jobs. What you need to do is match each of these names down the side here, David, Sandrine, Baptiste, and so on, to one of these jobs that would best suit them. So you're going to have three jobs left over. So in your books, you can put David and put his job, Sandrine, put her job, and so on, okay? Please don't just type these sentences into Google Translate, je m'intéresse aux sciences, and so on. Look for cognates there. So if I was looking at David's, can see je m'intéresse, it might be an interested, science, we know I would like, and then a shop. So if I was to skim read down here, we've got a hairdresser, might want a shop, but not necessarily to do with science. Factor, can you remember that? It's a postman. Farmer, mechanic, air hostess, vendor, do you remember that one from a couple of lessons ago? I mean salesperson, pharmacist, a teacher, and remember heavy goods driver, okay? So maybe you're not sure 100% there, which one might it be because of the word shop, but I can see science straight away matches about being a pharmacist. So maybe they're saying they would like to work in a pharmacy and it actually means have my own shop. So therefore, David, we would put pharmacien, okay? So we've done the first one together, Continue on and work out as many of these as you can. So you will use six of those jobs altogether, including, uh, not include, including David, sorry. Okay, so unpause when you're ready to check your answers. So when you are checking your answers, can you please correct in a different colour or copy and paste the green text as usual, okay? So Sandrine would like to be an instituteur, a primary teacher. She loves working with children. Baptiste would like to be a hairdresser. He says, interested in fashion, I cut my friend's hair. Amandine would like to be a post uh, person because uh, she likes being outside, going for walks and being organized. Chloe would like to be an air hostess. She likes traveling, visiting different countries. Zach would like to be a farmer. He mentions the word farm right there. He lives on a farm, would like to always work with animals. Okay, our next lot of vocabulary then is to do with the times people might work, their salary and tasks they might do. So same again, copy these into your book and see how many of these you can work out. There's a bit more extra new vocabulary here compared to the type of job you might have that we looked at in our previous list. So see what you can do. Doesn't matter if you have many gaps in your work. Um, just see what you can work out from the context. 
Okay, so if you unpause it, it means you've done as much as you can and you're ready to check the English. Don't just write down the English without trying to work some out because they will stick in your head better if you've had to work them out rather than just being given the answers. So we've got I work from nine to five. Okay, so remember with times in French, we put whatever number it is and then use this word heure, which means hours. So I work from nine hours to, and they use the 24 hour clock a lot in France. So 17 heures to five o'clock, okay? Je gagne means I earn, okay? In French, the word pound is livre. So je gagne cinq livres par heure. Yes, it means book as well, but obviously it depends on the context which one it's going to mean, okay? Maybe one task you might do in your part-time job is faire le café pour les clients, to so make coffee for customers. If you've written clients there, not necessarily wrong, but we wouldn't call somebody in a café your client, they would be your customer, so it means customer as well, okay? We've done à la case before, I work on the till. Probably wouldn't know livraison unless you'd worked out when we did je livre des journaux, I deliver newspapers, that with a livre, so we call a homophone, it means three different things, so pound, read and deliver, okay? So I do deliveries. Je serre les clients, I serve customers. I tidy away, like je range, like we did with I tidy my bedroom, we did t jobs at home. I tidy sports equipment or the clothes if you work in a clothes shop and I fill the shelves. Unlikely that you would have worked that one out, okay? So make sure you've got all the English, then move on with us when you're ready. Okay, so we're going to do a reading to go over some of that vocabulary now. So if you can please write one to seven in your book or on the computer. And then you're going to write the name of each person by reading their speech bubbles that matches with each statement. So which person says they start at four o'clock and they finish at six o'clock? Bear in mind, they are likely to use the 24 hour clock. Um, so if you're not so sure about 24 hour clock, you'll be scared and 12 onto these numbers, but hopefully you are aware of that. Um, so take some time now to skim read what you're looking for and then skim read the texts because you already know what you're looking for, you should start to see some of the answers as you skim read each text then. And then when you're ready, check your answers and mark them in a different colour or copy and paste a green tick. Okay? Okay, so number one is Ben. He says, I start at 16h. Okay, et je finis, I finish at 18h. So, 4 till 6. Then we have Luke in 13h. 13 euro 50. So je gagne 13 euro 50. So they say 13 euros 50. But they set it out like this. So though they say it like we do, like 13 pounds 50, the euro sign comes at the end. Qui travaille chaque samedi, who works every Saturday, says Abdul. I work tous les samedis, all Saturdays. Natalie says I earn 5 euros per hour. Sophie, je travaille tous les week-ends. I work every weekend. Luc, I work from 9 to midday. Midi. And then Natalie says, I work seven hours per week. Okay. So if I've gone too fast, I just rewind and check your answers. You obviously can pause whenever you need to. And now we're going to look at a listening activity. We're going to listen to four people describing their part-time jobs and we're just going to switch into another video now uh, as I had to do the listening separately in school for you, for you to hear the listening, okay? In fact, Mr Lewis will probably be able to put these together, but they might be in a separate video when you come to do this. Uh, I'll explain on Monday once it's all been converted, for, uh, ready, okay?